they want to and give it over to Enraided. Well, let me stop also you. be an option. Let me stop you there because TLDR was banned Morgana and it's not been done. Or first pick. Or first pick Morgana. Morgana has not been played by Enraided this year yet. Used to play it, though. There. Used to play it. If uh, it is opted to lock in, what does this allow the unicorn to There we go, love? boys. There we go. I like what SK Gaming is doing now. Taking away that Morgana. So you can run the same setup if you want to. Another change to be made. We need an assassin in the mid lane for SK Gaming. Because when you do that, you stop Power Beaver from picking their slow scaling champions in the mid lane. Zed is a champion where Power of Evil doesn't have any direct counters to it, unless he's been practicing the likes of Urgot. He has played Chogath, though, in the mid lane, which does well in the laning phase against Zed. Also, late in the stages, you can build that Hourglass, get very tanky, you won't get one shot by him. So that could be an option for the Unicorns if Zed gets locked in. Otherwise, go LeBlanc. We haven't seen Power of Evil play Zed, so that's not there as one of the counters or one of the good matchups, at least. I think that's a good champion now for SK. Well, loading to that previous game, Enrated was 5-0 on Nami. He's now 5-1. If Zed gets locked in for Fox, Fox is 5-0 on that champion. And we'll see what they decide to prioritize. Kikis will take the fat man in the jungle, or the grungle if you prefer. Hellasung is going to default to his second tier support. He's only played four champions the entire year at the professional level. He's, of course, Annie Morgana, Thresh, and Leona. He's going to be locking in that Thresh for this match. Yeah, no real surprise for him. Annie is left open, and funny enough, he doesn't just lock it in. No, Thresh for him. They can set up somewhat the same, where instead of a binding, you have the hook, which also connects into a lot of chain CC from them, so they can still run that Jinx as well. But SK Gaming, as long as they change up the mid lane picks for, for themselves, they should be fine against the slow scaling comp that Unicorns ran in the last game. Something to highlight as well, Unicorns favoring the Gragas over the Maokai. On the first rotation, when Morgana was taken away from them last week, it was Thresh, Maokai, they're one and two. If SK, now. if SK lock in this Caitlyn and Lee, it may give Unicorns the option to go that route. So Sven Skeren going to a mega comfort pick. But here's the thing. Given playing the Kate you were talking about previously. If Unicorns pick the Maokai, they get the same problem that SK had in the last game, where Maokai has a tough time engaging against Morgana. So that's why they're most likely not going to pick it. Cyan can always start a fight instead, and he does fine in the lane against the Maokai. It's just an even farm lane anyway. So in this situation here, we might just get Maokai last pick for SK and then an Assassin in the mid lane, and we're good to go. Only problem then is that you're going to have a lot of physical damage for them. I'm lying to you because I'm thinking Zed as the only mid lane champ for yeah. some reason. LeBlanc Ari could come in as well. And then you have the Maokai top lane, and that's a good setup for SK. If Unicorns lock in the Jinx, it is to lane swap, and it is... oh. Smart thing. <laughs> By picking LeBlanc, you want to do Zed into LeBlanc. But you can't do Zed if you have Maokai top lane, because then you have too much physical damage. So by him taking this pick here, you've removed that from SK Gaming. It's going to be the best one, because also if they get, if you see an Ari into LeBlanc, you lose the matchup pre-level 6. So this pick here from Unicorns are so, so smart. And then you pick the Jinx, you can just lane swap, and you can fast push down, because that's what SK always likes to do in the in the swaps as well. You match the fast push, and then you meet up when you hit level 6. Anyway, you got a BF sword, and that's where you can start doing something against a Caitlyn. If this gets locked in, could also be Morgana top lane then <laughs> for Freddy. There's a lot of things here, but Deficient, I, love the way, for a I, I love the way the teams are trying to bait each other into a bad comp, but also how they have answers for it. So now you get Morgana top lane as the magic damage, and you can get that Zed in the mid lane. For the first time, we will see a Morgana. No, uh, in the playoffs for Freddy, he's played it twice before. When I look at my stats, currently 2 and 0. 67% kill participation. So Freddy is going back to something he's played in the spring split. I don't remember it particularly well, so yeah, it is, we'll have uh, to see how he can perform on that one. But he's got that mixed damage, magic and physical. He does. And Deficio Shivana was banned against Huni yesterday all day long, and Chachi's going to run it today. Yeah, the TP smite top lane, you go for Skirmisher Saber and the Cinder Hulk, and you scale really well into the late game. You have fantastic jungle clear as well in a potential lane swap. You can 2v2 jungle or you can even jungle on your own because you have that smite. And then later on in the one-on-ones, Morgana will never be able to kill you. But this lane matchup, if it does go standard lanes, which is what SK Gaming want in this situation because you got a fantastic bottom lane setup, Caitlyn Annie, which is a bit of a kill lane even. If you manage to land a stun from Annie, try and pull down a trap from the Caitlyn and you got long range poke. Morgana in the lane for Freddy is just boring. 
<laughs> but it works because you just push the wave over and over and over and you chip away on that tower slowly, which secures SK Gaming, the outer turrets, and then they can start doing their 1-3-1. They always do when have an assassin in the mid lane. I love the adaptation for them. I like the fact they move Morgana top as well to yeah. get that Z LeBlanc matchup. You could see what Unicorns were trying to do. Be like, haha, we picked LeBlanc now. You can't do it because you want Maokai. Joke's on you. And SK turns it around. Well, we'll have to see how SK can handle themselves. I'm going to keep my eyes on Sven Skeren in this particular matchup. Lee Sin into Gragas. Your team comps are about to pop up. Lee Sin should have the advantage early, but I just feel Gragas is going to offer so much more as the game progresses. Guys at home, hashtag SK win, hashtag UOL win. Unicorns won the Twitter vote the first time we checked in. In the previous game, they won the first game fairly convincingly as well. Let's see if your votes are still leaning in favor. We're loading up onto the riff for game two of this best of five. And it was Unicorns of Love that opted into the red sides. You did touch on a very key point here with the Gragas outscaling and Lee Sin. The rest of SK Gaming also going to get outscaled by the Unicorns of Love. So they have to be able to get an early lead and start doing their 1 3 1 split push. Well, let's take, a look. Trouble. let's take a look how they handle themselves. And I also want to hear from Power of Evil what he thinks about Fox. I would even say he's equal to me. I think we are both pretty good. And his champion pool is, um, I would say, huger than Betsy. So I need to like prepare a bit more of my picks, obviously, to like against his strengths, or at least from my view. It looks like if he falls behind, he's falling behind pretty hard. And if he gets rolling, he's a uh, beast. Well, I think we can say the same for the rest of SK Gaming as well as a team. If they do tend to fall behind, or if they do fall behind, they tend to really struggle getting back in the game. This here is going to be the same situation. You have a double tank setup from Unicorns of Love. You've got the hyper carry in the late game for them as well on Vardax here. That is very, very strong. Cinderhulk Shavana becomes nearly unkillable in the late game with the 25% bonus HP, the 20% damage reduction from the Skirmisher's Saber on the enemy AD carry. So SK Gaming here, not running a tank or anything, they have to snowball early with the Lee Sin, have to get down these outer turrets, and then just simply push Unicorns into a corner where they will never get enough time and enough farm to reach a late game point. Well, we'll see if SK can make that early lane decision happen. It seems like Unicorns have been able to read the lane swap. They will be meeting Forgiven. Yeah, but this is in favor of SK. This is SK top. countering Unicorns of Love and predicting they're swapping to the top side. They want to meet them. You can also see, because they're starting Grump, they know or they expect it to be a 2v2 matchup. But this is very good for SK Gaming, exactly what they wanted. You get to bully the Jinx in the early stages of the game. You get also the Morgana who can start pushing. Shavana, when she's running Smite, needs a bit more time before she can do anything in the lane. You need to get the Skirmisher Saber completed. You need to even get a second item to stack with the Cinderhawk before you become very, very strong. So it is a free lane for both Forgiven and Freddy. I will see how... Who can make use of that advantage more? And Rated and Forgiven playing very aggressive already. Rated positioning very far forward. Remember, in Rated actually lost picking that Annie this time around. And we'll have to see Vardax and Hillisang paying a lot of respect to the level two. And obviously, the long range auto attacks from both of their respective opponents. We'll have to keep track on how far down Vardax will fall. And also see how the rest of the lanes are playing out. Power of Evil's got a small advantage in that middle lane. And it's going to be an expected farm fest from the respective top laners who are currently in the bottom lane. Yeah, it's going to be a farm fest where uh, Freddy gets a few levels, gets a few ranks in his W, and he's going to start pushing away on that tower from the Unicorns of Love. Mid lane, it's a matchup that we see fairly often, and it, it tends to go the same way where early on, before the first back, it's very even. But then you force the LeBlanc to build arm guard early, delay her normal spikes of going, let's say, Morel, Normicon, Death Cap, and have their one-shot potential on a lot of champions, you force her into an hourglass, and that delays her quite a lot. Makes her value not weak, but weaker at least, and that's where Zed has that advantage, because